we move right away. I, talk, I promise you we catch up with the time and we move right away with the, the last session of this wonderful day with uh, Ambassador Sana and Eli Amir, please. Okay, <laughs> welcome and uh, good afternoon. As you can see, I am not Indian and I am not ambassador and I don't have the turban. It's not only that that he is taller than me, but with the turban he is double as much taller than me. <coughs> My name is Eli Amir and our, uh, our uh, guest, the Honorable <coughs> Ambassador of India. Beside that, he is a wonderful writer, journalist, a wonderful man who accomplished a lot in his uh, office here. Since he is going to conclude the period that he served here as ambassador of India in Israel, I would like just to indicate one important fact for us. He brought the Indian culture here. Uh, we met here twice with uh, writers from India. He brought here Indian music and uh, we had the taste and blossom of the Indian culture. Besides that, he managed to establish a wonderful relationship with many Israelis here, including myself. Am I right or not? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and even he gave me special honor by uh, writing about me and publishing a wonderful article, a wonderful article. I have to show it to my mistress. <laughs> that will help me a lot. I already sent it to her. You said, <laughs> <laughs> you sent to the Indian mistress. I have problems <laughs> with the Israeli one. Oh. <laughs> The Israelis are tougher than the Indians. <laughs> so let's begin, my dear. You are, your father was a writer, your son is a writer, three generations of writer. Can you please characterize their writing? Let me tell you, it's the most unprofitable family business. <laughs> you tell me here in we, Israel, they rob us. The we, all, we all revel in our uh, poverty, uh, which is fine. No, uh, yes, uh, yes, I am probably the slowest of the three. Uh, I, my first uh, real book, what I call it, came out when I was 45. Uh, my son's first book is coming out now when he's 27. My father's first book came out when he was 19. So I was clearly the, uh, the slow coach. But uh, I am slower than you, by the way. All, almost the same. Almost <laughs> the same. That's right. All, but then you have caught up after that. Okay. And your books are bigger. <laughs> I have both of them. And when I can't find my dumbbells, I <laughs> to put them there. Lovely. <laughs> yes, there, uh, my father was also a writer and uh, he, he wrote a lot of, a uh, fair number of novels in Punjabi. Uh -huh. He wrote in Punjabi, uh -huh. uh, but he was predominantly a short story writer and a poet. And he wrote a lot of poetry, uh, but his, sh uh, I think, short stories were probably the strongest. And um, he wrote a lot about partition, which, uh, you know, it's a common theme, a lot about refugees, a lot about partition, a lot about the problems of 47 or 48, as we, as we talk about in both countries. And uh, my son has just written his first book, so let's see what it's about. So it's uh, exile and language, as a matter of fact, exile and expression. Well, exile, uh, exile in this, not in the sense of that you see it in, uh, or you, you have it in, um, Israel in terms of, you know, the, or the Jewish experience uh, of exile. Uh, I've written a book on, called The Exile, but that's a different story. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I was talking about was uh, we maybe, maybe enforced migration, you know, in the sense of that when we had the partition of but India. Yet it's um, uprooting. It, it is an uprooting. It is a, that is the common, common theme because 
there were, uh, you know, uh, um, several million people who had to just leave home and go. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so they left behind their homes and they started new lives. So that is a very strong theme in, uh, in, in India still, in, in uh, research, in fiction, in, uh, we, we, we still haven't come fully to terms with it. In which language do you write and your son? I write in English and so does my son. Uh -huh. yeah. So here, a big difference between your father <clears throat> and you and your son. Can you please, maybe it's a stupid question, can you please characterize in short sentences what are the main subjects of literature in such a huge country um, like India? Oh, it's impossible. It's, it's uh, impossible uh, because you have people writing about everything in, in India. But, you know, you have to be very careful when you're saying writing in India. I mean, I have to be very careful even when I think because there is a huge wealth of Indian writing in Indian languages. Mm -hmm. uh, much of it is still undiscovered by the outside world mm -hmm. and, and within India also. I mean, if there's huge amount of uh, writing in, uh, in uh, Odia language, which uh, uh, I am not aware of, for instance, because the translation industry has not quite kept up with the writing industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if we leave, you know, it's unfair, but if you leave that away and you come to this very narrow fringe, which is the Indians writing in English, you know, it seems like we are the uh, sort of the people in the main frame, but that's because only English is easily transportable. And uh, those themes, well, you know, a, you know, everybody's at the moment telling their stories. So you have family stories, you have family sagas, uh, you have uh, uh, love stories, you have history being opened up and historical fiction uh, being uh, brought out. So you have a large number of uh, uh, themes, even in that narrow fringe. And I, I'm just touching two or three, but... Uh, you simply have to go to the Jaipur Literary Festival website to see the kind of uh, themes that are at display. But there are some similarities. Let me ask you a question which is not a diplomatic one, okay? You are finishing now your term. You spent with us more than three years. I had the privilege to visit you at home and you visited me here and we know each other for a long time. How do you see this crazy society here in Israel? <laughs> you know, three and a half years here, uh, it's, it's like, it's a continuum from coming from India and going back to India, <laughs> you know. We ourselves are a pretty crazy society. Yeah. So, you know, we have our own... Uh, but we are so small and yet Yeah, so you are, crazy. you are less crazy. Yeah. <laughs> You're small crazy, we are yeah. big crazy. Really? <laughs> <laughs> That's a comfort. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, it is, it is, what is invigorating here is, is you know, you, you, you meet anybody and you can have an argument. <laughs> uh, I, and you can do that in India also. You, know? you, know, you can yeah. have an argument with yeah. your auto rickshaw man, you yeah. can have an argument. It's <laughs> arguments come easy in India. You know, you know my counselor, when I was... Uh, a child in kibbutz Mishmar Emek, in scapegoat. She used to tell me that wherever there are two Jews, they have three opinions, <laughs> sometimes even four. That's what I found here. So Absolutely. And, and, people, and we also have three opinions amongst two people, but we have them in different languages. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> which, which makes it even more interesting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you can't keep on asking me all the questions. Go ahead. This is, Go this ahead is not and fair. It feels, it feels like you are interviewing me. I have to interview the author of such big books. <laughs> okay, no, okay. Go ahead. Yes. No, but uh, Fuad Khalashchi. Yeah. yeah. That's the real name. Fuad Elias Khalashchi. 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 Somebody, is somebody able to pronounce my name, my dear here? Yeah. Khlasci. Khlasci. I see that there is no Iraqi one it's, here. It's got nothing to do with khalas. <laughs> no. Okay. No. It's pure gold, something like that. It's pure uh, um, butter. So, Fuad Elias Khlasci to Eli Emir. What happened? 